Hi there, dear student of mathematics. You are joining me for a lesson on visual sequences. As you can see here, we have a pattern, a visual pattern, and we're going to focus on those now in this lesson. How can we make a rule to represent this pattern? Let's take some notes. You are going to use the notes page that was given to you in class. We began on page one, but if you flip the page, you'll see three other pages attached. And we will begin right here with the sample problem. And then you will try one on your own after that and check your work. Let's get going. So here's the sample problem. We have this pattern. Our goal is to make two sequences from it. In this first table, we're going to make a sequence for the number of tiles. And in the second table, we're going to make a sequence for the perimeter. So let's begin with the number of tiles. And what it means by number of tiles is how many pieces make up each of these figures. So in figure one, we can clearly see it is made up of one, two, three triangle pieces, so three tiles. So we're going to put in figure number one, three tiles. Okay, so now look at figure two, how many tiles, and figure three, how many tiles. Put those numbers in here. And then also, even though we don't have an image of figure four, we should be able to spot a pattern. So how many tiles will figure four have as well? Let's check your work. So five, seven, and the mysterious figure four, which would be the next one in this pattern, would have nine. The pattern's very clear. We can see it's going up by two every time. Hope you got those same answers. Now, hmm, it also includes in this table figure zero. That's kind of strange. What is figure zero? Well, figure zero is the figure that would appear before this one, right? Usually when we talk about sequences, we begin with uh, term number one, term number two, term number three. Sometimes, however, we begin with term number zero. So let's look at this one in the same way. What would term number zero or figure zero look like? Um, you don't have to draw it, but how many tiles would it have? So take this pattern and instead of working your way forward, work your way backward to this uh, mysterious figure zero, which would be back here. Well, that one would clearly have one tile or be made of one tile because if this is going up by two in this direction, then we would have to go down by two to go back to this figure number zero. That number is essential. And if you watched the video already on linear sequences, you're already thinking about that number. It represents something very important. Now we're going to plot these points to represent the sequence on this graph. So our x axis is going to be n, all right? the input value, the number of, uh, the figure number, all right, so n, and on the y-axis, we're going to have the number of tiles. So figure number one had three tiles, so plot a point there. Figure one, three tiles, okay. Figure two, five tiles. Figure three, seven tiles. And figure four, nine tiles. Look at that. We can clearly see these are flowing in a linear uh, trend, okay? If you were to connect those points, you would have a line. Makes sense. This looks linear. Okay. Now, why did I put figure zero in here? Well, we know when we create the equation for a line, because this is basically a line, right? We use uh, the form y equals mx plus b. And in this case, the equation of this line would be y equals 2x plus 1. Why does that work that way? Again, the value in front of the x is our slope. And in this case, we can see when we go from one red point to another, we go up 2 over 1 up to over one, up to over one, our slope is two, okay? Or you could write two over one, means the same thing. And then the number after that is our y-intercept. So here I wrote one. If you follow these points back to figure zero, and that's why we did figure zero, because the y-intercept is where um, a function or curve or line crosses the y-axis. And this is the y-axis, and this would hit the y-axis here, not at figure one, Figure zero tells us where it would hit the y-axis, so right here at one. So that's why our equation is 2x plus one. This is the slope, this is the y-intercept. Okay, try the same thing for um, now the second table. Okay, oh, sorry, let me just announce one more thing about that, right? That's, that's a linear equation, but we're in the world of sequences now, so we're gonna write the rule for that sequence using sequence notation or, or sequence form, right? We're gonna write u sub n equals 2n plus one. Same equation, right? Still like a linear equation. We're just using un and n because that is uh, more common for when we discuss sequences. Okay. All right. Now let's try the same thing in the second table. This second table is now creating a sequence for the perimeter. Each of these figures has a perimeter. And if you remember uh, from your work in geometry, the perimeter is the distance around a shape or the 
the sum of all the lengths around the shape. So when we talk about the perimeter of these figures, we mean just count the lengths around it. So each of these we're going to say is considered like one unit. So this goes one, two, three, four, five. The perimeter around there is five lengths. We don't count the inner ones. That's not perimeter. So that's five. So for figure one, the perimeter is five. Okay, what's the perimeter of figure two? I hope you came up with seven. You went, you made your way around the shape and counted those little segments and you got seven. Great. How about figure three? And then what would figure four be if there was one? Okay, those are nine and 11. Again, the pattern is clear. I hope you took the moment to count though, just to confirm. So there's that. Now, what, how, what would be the perimeter of figure zero? Again, imagine we jump back to mysterious figure zero. So look at this pattern and jump back in time. How, what would the perimeter be? Well, that would be three because these are going up by two this way. So down by two this way. Great. Now we've established that. Let's plot those points and see if we can make a linear equation for that as well. So here, uh, figure one has a perimeter of five. Figure two has a perimeter of seven. Figure three has a perimeter of nine. And that's off the graph, but figure four would be 11. Now, figure zero, if we went back in time, would have a perimeter of three. That's our y-intercept. So what would be the linear equation? Not the not the sequence rule, but the linear equation for that, for this here, if you made a linear equation, what would it be? Okay, I hope you came up with uh, y equals 2x plus 3, okay, because the slope again is up 2 over 1, up 2, so that's the slope of 2, and the y-intercept is 3, and that turns into a sequence rule that looks like this, u sub n equals 2n plus 3, right, just like the linear rule, but written in sequence language or sequence form. Okay, very simple idea, but Sometimes the simplest things are the things we take for granted and we forget or we don't pay as close attention as we need to. All these things we've talked about here are really, really important. Linear things, slope, figure zero as a representation of the y-intercept, all these connections, very important. Let's try one more. So try this one. This is the next one on your page. Let's see if you can follow the same process. Let's begin with the sequence for number of tiles and what would you fill in here for zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, and also fill in the uh, the table now for the sequence for the perimeter. Okay, so looking at the perimeter, and what values would you get here for figure zero, one, two, three, four? Okay, now that you have your two table rules, what is your rule? I mean, you should graph it as well, plot the points, check the linear equation for those. So actually, let's start with that. What's the linear equation for uh, the sequence of tiles? Okay, and now what is the linear equation for the sequence for the perimeter? And finally, based on those graphs you've plotted and the linear equations you've made, what is the rule for each of those sequences in sequence form? Great, check, uh, double check all your work here. Uh, you can see in this one here was our sequence for a number of tiles going up by three every time. So when you went back to figure zero, you went down three to negative one. And you can then see the red points connecting to the green one. There's our linear form of that. The equation would be three X minus one because the slope, it goes up by three every time. That's the slope and minus one here because uh, that is our Y intercept. For the sequence for the perimeter, our sequence was here. Again, we see it going up by three. By the way, this is coincidental. In later ones you'll try, it's not always going to be the same slope. For the two examples so far, we've seen the same slope. It will be different in the future, you'll see. Anyway, this is going up by three every time. That's our slope, three. And if you went back to figure zero, instead of going up three, you go down three, and then you have a y-intercept or a figure zero at one. So there's our y-intercept. All right, pretty easy stuff, but again, I took it slow because there's some very big ideas here. And uh, I've always seen students, uh, for some reason or another, you know, have a hard time with linear equations. So this is just another look at linear equations, basically, in sequence form. So great job. Uh, now I'm going to give you this little challenge. On the next page there, you see a bunch of these continuing. And that maybe this whole process is very uh, easy for you now. You, you get it. It makes sense. So let's try it. In four minutes, how many of these can you complete? And uh, if, even if you don't get them all done in uh, four minutes, uh, enter, let me know how many you got done in four minutes. And then when you return to class, we will look at the rest of them. But please try to finish all of them for homework so that we can continue from there in our next lesson. See you soon. Now take four minutes. See how you can do.